Hello everyone, welcome to my series on a beginner's guide to procedural generation. In this series, we will be exploring concepts as generating 2D and 3D worlds, generating and altering meshes. As the series progresses, we will be covering more complex subjects relating to procedural generation. Let's start the series off by taking a look as to what procedural generation is. Procedural generation is generating worlds, terrains, maps, and other objects through code and computing power. We assign a set of rules, per se, that the computer must follow and carry out. For example, I assign a rule to state that the computer must generate a world of the size 10 by 10. I then want the computer to place objects based on the size of the world. I give the computer the location of where to place these objects and then tell it to put everything together and generate the world. Let's have a look how we can do this through code. Now that we have outlined our rules, we can begin to explore how to convert those rules into code. Per our first rule, we wanted a world that was of 10 by 10, which we are defining here. We can see here that we are creating a variable called world size x and assigning it the value of 10. Below that, we are creating world size z, which we are also assigning the value of 10. Within the start function, we are creating a for loop. We are creating a variable x and assigning it 0. We're saying if x is less than the world size x, we want x to increment every time this loop runs. We then encapsulate another for loop within the first for loop and we are creating a variable z assigning it zero. Then we are stating if z is less than world size z, we want z to increment every time this loop is ran. Now we go back to our rules which state I want the computer to place objects based on the size of the world. This is initially what these two for loops are doing. Now our third rule was, I give the computer the location of where to place these objects. We are creating a vector 3 called POS, short for position. When creating new vector 3s, we must provide the X, Y and Z axes. For the X axes, which is defined here, we are merely saying we want it to be X times our grid offset. So we want this variable times by this variable. For the y-axis, since we want it to be flat, we are assigning it 0. We are doing the same as we did for the x-axis that we are doing for the z-axis. We are saying we want z times by our grid offset. Now that we have defined where we want these objects to be placed, we can actually go about creating this object. We create a new game object called block and we use the instantiate function provided by unity saying we want block game object which is a game object that we assigned in our inspector as the block to spawn followed by its position and its rotation quaternion the identity basically means we want the rotation to be that of the game object that we are spawning now to clean up our inspector we want to have this game object fall under our world controller. We are saying that we want this blocks transform dot set parent, which is another function provided by Unity, to be this transform. Basically this game object's transform. Now we can go into Unity and see what this is doing. We can see in our hierarchy that we have an empty game object called world controller of which I have assigned it the generate grid script. I've also assigned the block game object as a prefab which I manually made and inserted into the prefabs folder. Now when we go about running this we will see that we now have a grid generated. You may be wondering why is it so weirdly spaced apart? Well, that is where the grid offset comes in. If you want a flat plane, you merely adjust this variable and you'll be able to either move the blocks closer in or further out. Thank you very much for joining me on the first episode on my series on a beginner's guide to procedural generation. I hope that this episode shared some insight as to what procedural generation is and 
showcased a very simple form of procedurally generating a grid. For our next episode, we will be looking as to how to displace our grid by using Perlin noise.